What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective C Tutorials Lesson 23 and in this lesson we'll be going over array objects and then at the end of this lesson we'll be going over the NS Mutable array. Now uh, first I'm going to go over a couple problems with our program. Now the first thing here isn't really a problem but um, using numbers as objects and that's what we did in the last lesson we converted all the numbers to objects or some of the numbers to objects and uh, Doing this is great and everything, but it doesn't really change how the program runs. So it's kind of useless if you don't use arrays, but we'll get into that in just a second. Also, as of now, we have to create a new method for every transaction that we spend dollars or uh, charge the currency or do whatever we're doing. Um, we have to create a new method for every single transaction. So if we wanted 20 transactions where we spend money, um, we're going to have to put in 20 different methods. So you'd have to put England budget, spend dollars, number of dollars in England 1, uh, number of dollars in England 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 20. And so we're going to have to have 20 actual methods if we want to do that. Now, this isn't uh, a good way to do it, and there's a much, much better way. This is also a very common problem where you have a lot of objects in your program and you often may not even know how many transactions or objects or whatever you will need. So uh, you could be getting the data from a database or a list of instructions or user input, a lot of different things that you really aren't sure exactly how many you'll need. And even if you do know exactly how many objects you'll need in your program uh, listing them like the example that I just showed you is really too long and confusing and is way 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 too easy to make mistakes now that's where the container class that's where container classes come in handy uh, a container class is actually a class that is capable of storing objects and there's two types of container classes um, that are available in Cocoa. The first is a dictionary, and we'll cover this uh, down the road in a little bit. And then there's array, and that's what we'll be going over in this lesson. Now, arrays, uh, what are they? Well, it's a collection or list of objects grouped together. And there's actually two types of arrays. The first is a NS array, and you can store a fixed number of objects in this array. And then the second one is an NS mutable array. And this uh, array allows you to add objects to the array as needed. And it's very easy to separate these two because NS mutable array obviously, obviously has mutable in it, which means uh, liable to change. So uh, very easy to differentiate these. So NS array, fixed number, NS mutable array, it's mutable, you can add objects as needed. Now, some of the basics about arrays. Um, first off, the types of objects in array do not have to be the same. So it could be your own objects that you've created, or it could be an NS object, it could be whatever, all, um, all clumped together, doesn't matter. The different items in the array must be object though, so you can't add a variables and objects and everything, it has to be objects in the array. So this is why last lesson we converted the numbers from variables to objects because um, we were preparing to use arrays. Now a placeholder is something in a mutable array that reserves a spot to fill it with an object later. So if you say, okay, spot three in this array, I don't have the object ready right now at um, when it first goes through this array, but uh, in a little bit in the program, then the object will be ready to use. I'm just gonna put in a placeholder here, and that placeholder is the NS null object. So you just put in NS null for that spot in, uh, or that in that number three spot in the um, NS mutable array. Now we're going to be going over cre exactly how to create um, an NS mutable array. Now um, up there to the top is an example of creating an NS mutable array and as you uh, look at it and 
uh, it probably looks very, very familiar because it's basically the exact same thing about how you created the NS number object. Um, creating objects and everything, because an array technically is um, an object. Uh, it's all kind of the same way of creating and allocating memory, memory and initializing the stuff in Objective C. So uh, NS mutable array obviously says this is a mutable array, and then uh, asterisk Europe transaction says um, this is the name of the array, um, and technically, of course, is actually a pointer to the array, and then you have. NS mutable array allocate or alloc, which is allocating memory for this NS mutable array. And then you have initialize or init with capacity. And this initializes the array with how many spots you want. Now, since this is a mutable array, that number there really doesn't matter. Um, you do kind of want to have it uh, somewhere close if you're gonna have like a hundred if you know you're gonna have at least a hundred don't put one because it does help as far as uh, uh, kind of memory management and stuff and allocating space for it but if you're just gonna have one to ten or so and you know no more really than ten you know if it's within the uh, within a small number it really doesn't matter um, you can just put one doesn't really matter but anyways uh, the proceeding was a very very similar to creating the budget object and the NS number object that we've created in uh, previous lessons now how do you add objects to this NS mutable array sure it's great that you now have this array but it's kind of useless if you don't actually add things to it so if you want to add um, an object to the array you just uh, specify the array and then you send it the add object message and followed by uh, what um, object you want to add in this case it's the number dollars in Europe object that we want to add and then it's added to the array now objects aren't copied to the array when uh, they're added to the array. Instead, they receive a retain message. So, uh, when I said that it was added to the array, technically it isn't added in the array. All that happens is it gets sent um, a retain message to be retained within that array. And uh, I know this is kind of beyond where we are right now because we haven't gone over memory management as far as retain and release. And these are two big. Um, items or topics in memory management. So this part uh, you don't really have to worry about right now how, how it all works as long as you know how to do it. But um, then when you're when the array is uh, deallocating all the objects, once it's done with everything is deallocating all the objects, um, it sends a release message and this releases it from the array. So uh, if you don't understand any of that, don't worry about it. Um, as long as you know how to add the objects to the array and everything, you'll be fine. And of course, we'll go over memory management um, a lot in future lessons. Now, um, accessing different items in your array. So it's great that you created this array, and it's great that you've added objects to the array, but how do you access them in the array? Now, what separates an array from just a collection is that you access the different objects using an index. So, you can get a specific item in the array by sending it a message. So, that message is object at index, and this gives you the array item you asked for. Now, one way of getting uh, the different items is this object at index, and then there's another way that we'll go over in just a little bit. But right here we're gonna um, we're gonna pass the Europe budget spend dollars method and instead of just putting uh, whatever it was before it was like number dollars in Europe instead of just passing that we're gonna pass uh, we're gonna say the, this array holds a specific um, object and the object at index is at the index of a zero and it's a double value so all we're doing is saying instead of passing Europe uh, 
dollar transaction or whatever it is um we're gonna find europe dollar transaction in the array and then pass it to spend dollars now if this doesn't quite make sense it'll make a whole lot more sense once we actually code it but um i kind of want to skip over this part and look at uh what's after object at index and you'll see a zero and you're probably saying how can something be indexed at zero well uh this is actually because arrays start counting the first index is actually at zero and this is what we'll be going over in this slide now counting the spot slash slots in arrays so yeah, as I said, it starts counting at zero. So if you had an item at spot three in array, there are at least four items in the array. So there's zero, one, two, and three. That's four. Now, if there are six items in array, the last spot in the array is at spot five because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's six different spots there. So this is just a kind of a little odd thing that you need to remember whenever you're working with a arrays because it can easily mix you up and get the wrong object and really cause a lot of problems in your code now there are some other array messages one is uh, the count message which uh, returns the number of items in an array and then there's also uh, a lot of other different messages some that you can sort the arrays compare to arrays uh, you can create a new array with content from current array you can insert object as specific index replace remove objects all that cool stuff be sure to check out um arrays and ns mutable arrays in the documentation to get a lot of a lot of information about them now enumerating and enumerating returns each item of the array sequentially and this is what we'll actually be using in code in uh, part two of this lesson now uh enumeration uses the for in which is a spin off of a for loop and enumerating is useful because it allows you to tell um, each element of the array to do something so this is the basic setup here um you say for and that's kind of like the keyword that this is a for in um little uh enumeration here and then you have type a variable so you actually create a variable to pass all these uh all the different items of the array through one by one and then you use this variable as an argument in the statement below and then you have an expression which is uh in and then the uh the specific array and then down below you have the statements so that's the basic setup and now we're going to go over it a little bit more like i said four tells the compiler to take each item in the array in your transaction tells which array and this number a transaction creates a variable the template stores different items of the array and then the statement down there you're a budget spend dollars and instead of passing uh europe transaction one transaction two transaction three uh individually we can just use this and then we just pass um t uh to this europe budget spend dollars method we just pass it this one variable which is a transaction and of course we have we say that's a double value but um we just pass it this one uh variable or object and then uh because this object has all the arrays passed through one by one so it's a really really cool um again this will make a, a little bit more sense when we do it in code if it's not really clicking right now but that is actually all i have for this lesson i know this was uh quite a long keynote lesson but a lot a lot of information that i went over so now we're going to jump into xcode and actually code up some ns immutable arrays now as always uh thanks for watching and please subscribe if these uh videos have been helping you and of course like and comment below to make sure that uh i know that you enjoy them so 
Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part two.